Christian and you're not living according to God's plan, the devil's already got you and he's not going to bother you. You're not going to be tested. You're going to just live that happy go lucky. And I'm not going to say it's going to be perfectly smooth sailing. I don't say that by no means. But when the devil's got you, you don't go through the same things as a Christian does. Over and over and over, I've seen it in my life. I've seen it when I was walking with God. I saw it when I was not walking with God. And it happens. Uh, I forgot this. Vacation Bible School next week at uh, New Hope Church in Gainesboro. Um, trying to get through here. I'm sorry. message. Is your faith being tested? Is your faith tested? Yes, no, maybe. I don't know. Mine's been wore out before and sometimes it just doesn't get, get nothing bothers me. Anybody else been there? Okay. Uh, are you walking with God or Satan? There's only two, cho two choices. Either you're walking with God on a daily basis or you're walking with Satan. Even Christians sometimes walk with Satan. Not because it's God's design, but it's because we get lazy. I've been lazy a lot of my Christian life. I'm sure some of you can say the same thing. There's only two choices. The devil doesn't mess with those he already has. If you're not Christian, the devil's not going to mess with you. Because he's got you. If you call yourself a Christian and you're not living for God, he ain't going to mess with you either. He might stick something in there every once in a while, but he don't wear you out like he does the Christian. The Christian gets wore out every day. Something happens to try to trip us up. I don't care who you are. The preacher will tell you, Ron will tell you, He's, he told me this morning that he had two major events at his job this week that shouldn't happen. Okay? And, and why? Because he runs a Christian business? Because everybody knows he has a Christian business? And, and Ron, I'll even say this. Because you bragged two weeks ago about your crew. Okay? You bragged two weeks ago about your crew. And two things happened this week that reminded him that the devil's still at work. Right? <laughs> so, what happens? It happens all the time. Testing draws us either closer to God. How close is your walk? How close is your walk to God? And that's a serious question. Because if your walk is pretend... If your walk is, uh, I'm a Sunday morning Christian, I don't do anything else until Sunday morning, the devil ain't going to mess with y'all during the week. It's when you get up on Sunday morning and get ready to go to church, all heck breaks loose. You know, you get in an argument with your wife, your kids don't want to get up, you kick the dog on the way out of the house because you've had a bad day. We all experience things in our life as Christians. Now, my computer, well, it didn't mess up on y'all. James 1, verse 1. James, a bondservant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes, and I put in parentheses, to the true believers. Because even though we weren't mentioned... Specifically, this is written to the believers. This is written to the Christians. Dispersed abroad? Are we all from different places? Michigan, Tennessee, Georgia, <laughs> Lebanon. Lebanon. That, that was a perfect thing this morning. Raquel is from Lebanon. We're going to let her speak in tongues in a little while. <laughs> I'm teasing. 
we're going to, you know what I'm saying? We are spread from all over the place. There's probably very few in this room right now that were born here, raised here, and never left here. I don't know of anybody. Y'all were here, but you y'all were born here though, right? No, okay. But your family was from here, okay? So there's very few that were born here, raised here, and never left here. I know y'all just came from, you were in Baxter, because you told me that yesterday. You wish you could go back to Baxter, okay? Now, it's still Tennessee. I was raised in Tennessee, but then I moved off to Georgia. And now I'm back in Cookville. So it's around, we, we're, we're supposed to live for God no matter where we're at. James identifies himself as the same as Paul and Timothy did in Philippians and also in Romans. A bondservant. What's a bondservant? The Greek is doulos, means servant. Culture involuntarily uh, made permanent slaves. Because in the Greek culture, when you were a Hebrew, or when you were another nationality, you became a slave. Now, that is a bondservant. And sometimes it was permanent. But the passage here is talking about the fact that they are bondservants because of love. They are bondservants because they have made a commitment to Christ and they love Christ, and they became His servant. And that's what we are supposed to do. We're supposed to become bond servants, willingly committed to Christ. Who? Who is Christ? If you take the slave term, Christ, Jesus, is our Master. Master, Savior, Lord. In, in biblical times, they called, the slaves called them master or lord. But they didn't have an option to do that. We have an option. Do we take it seriously? Are you a true believer? The second part of that says, uh, or the, are you a true believer or on the sidelines? Do you truly believe what you say you believe? So many times we say one thing and we live something else. Do we believe it? How committed are you? What's your Christian walk like? Do you have a walk that identifies you as a child of God in the marketplace? I'm not talking about on Sunday morning. Sunday morning is, you know, those that, uh, what's the Bible say, that those are sick need a doctor? You, you need to come to church on Sunday mornings because they, cause you're sick. And we need people, we need people in the church to encourage one another. But what is it on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday? Oh, we start getting spiritual about Saturday night. And get ready for church on Sunday morning. Hey, I'm not preaching. I'm preaching to the choir. Because I've been there. And sometimes I still get flustered. And I slip a little bit. What's your walk like? What about when times are bad? What about when you know something is not what it should be. What about when when you you're you're facing Father's Day and you're alienated from your kids. Mother's Day. How is your walk then? How is your walk then? How is your walk when things aren't going right? That's what we got to check out. In all the world, how far does your witness go? 
does it just go beyond the church walls or in the church walls? Or does it go into the community? Does it go outside the community? Does it go to all the world? I'm going to mention Raquel. I'm sorry. Raquel, I was told, and it upset her when I told her this, I was told she was a Muslim. But in less than an hour, probably 30 minutes, I found out not only was she a Christian, but she was a strong Christian. And all we did for the next hour and a half, she missed an appointment. We talked about the Lord. Okay? Her witness has come all the way from Lebanon to the United States. And she's here looking for a church that preaches and teaches the Word. That's why she's here. Because her statement to me was, is they're just a bunch of, I don't want to, crazy people, uh, not real church people, not real Christians, not real people that are following God's Word. That was what she said in, in loose terminology because she still she has a little bit of broken English. But... We had a good time, didn't we? And then Friday, Debbie spends probably an hour and a half with her. So, and Mac, I spent two hours with you one day. Two hours. I was supposed to be somewhere. But I told him when we talked about it, I said, when God gives you an opportunity to share, to talk, you do it. God will make up the difference. And, and that's what we're supposed to do, is to always be ready to give an answer for the hope that's within us. But we're too hustle-bustle. We're too rushed. We're too afraid to share our faith. Next slide. This is where the message started. You will have trials. How do you handle them? Things are going to mess up. The whole reason I was at her house was a mess up. And then I got there and it was a bigger mess up than I thought it was. Okay? But see how God worked it out? We got to spend time together and she showed up today. The whole reason I was at his house was a mess up. Got to share and we're here today. The whole reason that Sherry's here right now is a mess up, a death. And she's here. And, and all of us can look at those situations in our life, how God orchestrated things in our life to bring us to Him. Sometimes we're already Christians, but we're playing that game. Sometimes we are trying to live it, but keep getting thrown curveballs. How do you handle your trials? How do you handle things when things go wrong in life? I'm going to tell you how. Verse 1, or verse 3. Consider it all joy, my brethren, my sister, my loved ones, my child. Consider it all joy when you encounter various trials. When you get sick and you can't go to work, do you think maybe that's God's plan for your life? Do you think that God had a plan to draw you closer? I can tell you in my life He did. What about if you lose your job? Do you go home and you sulk and you worry about it and do all this stuff? Or do you think, joyously, God's got a better plan? Where are you at in your Christian walk? We are supposed to live a joyous life. Consider it all joy when you face these things. I keep trying to go back to the King James. <laughs> when you encounter fair, uh, various uh, trials. Knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance. If you never... One of my favorite songs, Lord, don't move that mountain, just give me strength to climb it. If God moves the mountain every time we have problems in our life, 
You won't ever climb it. You won't ever grow. You won't ever build any strength to face the next trial. But what do we want? God, take this away from me. God, let me see what your plan is. That's what we should be praying. And let endurance have its perfect result. Perfect result. If you endure it, God will give you His perfect result. So that you may, perf so you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. Do you wish you were immune from problems? You won't ever grow. If, I, I, I've thought about this a lot. I've told y'all before, I ran track. I had a very, I ran track one year. And very successful. Lost one race in the whole year. I still hold a record in track in my high school that I went to. And I lost one race. How did I do it? Endurance. Every day I push myself more. When everybody else was complaining because it was raining outside and they didn't want to get wet, I had a little kid named Mike Brigham. He was a seventh grader. I'd put Mike Brigham on my back and I would run stairs for two hours. If I ran out in the field, I ran... Now, Mike didn't build any endurance, okay? Except for this bouncing stuff. But I ran over and over and over and over with Mike Brigham. Now, I weighed 120 pounds and Mike Brigham weighed about 80. But what happened? I ran the quarter mile. I had endurance. I didn't slow down. I kept pushing and pushing and pushing. I built endurance. And that's the same thing God's calling us to do is build endurance in our life that we don't give up, that we won't slow down. Consider, have you learned about Jesus? What is it? Joy. Jesus first, others second, yourself last. That's the true meaning of joy. Is you always put Jesus first. I almost corrected somebody this morning when they said something about fathers. How their husband was the greatest thing in the world. And this was a Christian. And, and, and the greatest thing in the world, the most important thing in life, it was a family member. And I wanted to say, you're a Christian. Jesus is first. Your husband is second. But she wouldn't have received it real well. Okay? Who's first in your life? That's what we got to figure out. Are you putting him first? Are you putting him second? Or are you putting him on the back burner when you need him? The natural response here that it talks about or the, is, is, you know, to not, in the bottom. Yeah. I didn't get my glasses this morning. Your natural response is not to rejoice when things go wrong. If something goes wrong in your life, woe is me. I don't understand why God's letting this happen. I'm a Christian. I, I, I'm a Christian. I might not be living, but I'm a Christian. Why is God letting this happen to me? Have we all been there? Nobody's answering. We have been. Ain't nobody in this room that hadn't been there if you're a Christian. But yet, we keep falling back. We make a conscious decision to face our trials with joy. With Jesus indwelling, it's not possible, but expected. You make a conscious... He's not going to force you. We still have free will. He's not going to force you to turn to Him. 
but he expects us to. Do we? Brethren, as Christian believers, followers of Christ, various trials, different, a bunch of different trials, a lot of trials, a lot of trouble, a lot of things that trip us up. Everything's going well. Everything's going well. Our job is going good. Everything's going good. And all at once in 48 hours, maybe, 60 hours, two things go bad and it turns into a disaster. Ron didn't get mad. He got concerned. It happens. It happens in my life. How do you respond when things go bad? Do you let it steal your joy? I have. I've let it steal my joy. I'm being honest. Do you let things trip you up so bad that you forget who the Creator is? Uh, it says testing your faith. Every faith, every trial becomes a test of your faith. Lord, don't move that mountain. Give me strength to climb it. It's designed to build you up, to strengthen your faith. If we fail it, it becomes a temptation and a test. How many have failed in their faith and before you know it it's a temptation a big temptation I preach all the time you miss church we know we're supposed to be here you miss church one time and you'll probably come back the next week but if you miss two times in a row you may or may not come back if you miss three times in a row you won't come back or if you do come back, you'll come back for Easter, Father's Day, Mother's Day, Christmas. We've got people, members of this church, that haven't darkened the doors of this church that still, if you ask them, they'll say, well, I'm a member of Sunlight. I wish you'd quit saying that. Okay? That haven't been to church in two and a half years. On Ron's recommendation, I quit bugging them about coming to church. Okay? I still let them know I'm praying for them. I still respond to them when I hear from them. But you know when we'll hear from them again? When there's a death, when there's a sickness, when there's a loss of job. Why? If you got the God of the universe taking time for you, why can't we take time for Him? Endurance makes you stronger. Perfect result you finish well. That's what perfect result means, that you'll finish well. Perfect, sinless, perfection, complete, whole, lacking nothing, God's provision. That's what perfect satisfaction is. God gives us that because He says that so that you may be perfect, complete and lacking nothing. That's His promise. That's God's promise to us. But yet, we want to keep Him out here on the outside. Uh, God, I'll call you when I need you. I, I, I'll reach out to you when something goes wrong. That's our... That's, that's an American Christian. I got a post, a message... Wednesday or Thursday that a mission group went to another country and they had 30,000 people pray to receive Christ. 30,000. We're lucky if we get five. These evangelists are lucky if they get, I shouldn't say luck, luck's not a word because Christians don't have luck. It's not in the it's not in the Bible. It's not but but you understand what I'm saying. Going back to my earthly terms. Unfortunate. But but we don't 
Why do we not do it? Because we hadn't endured and we haven't been made perfect because we're not enduring. We're not complete because we're not enduring. And we lack a whole lot. Now, I'm not saying that you won't have the resurrection. I'm not saying that. But do you want to go to heaven with nothing? Just by the skin of your teeth? Just because you ask Jesus to come in your heart? Or do you want to have somebody go with you? I want to have somebody go with me. What about you? Where does wisdom come from? You know, I've already talked about how all this stuff goes wrong in our life. Where does wisdom come from? God's wisdom is available to all of us as Christians. But if anyone lacks wisdom, let him ask of God. That's the only place wisdom. You can't get in a science book. You can't get in a history book. You can't get in an English book. Wisdom comes solely from God. Now, I'm not saying you don't study because you're supposed to. That's knowledge, okay? Thank you. Let him ask God, who gives to all generously. If you want wisdom, ask God for it, and he'll give it to you abundantly. I'm not standing here today because I'm smart. I'm standing here today because I trust God and I trust His Word. I'm not supposed to be here, according to man's terms. I'm here because God put me here. And I learn every time... I start to say open my Bible. I do open my Bible. <laughs> I study, I prepare from my Bible and then put it on here. Okay? And I read other things. What, what God does when men pray. That's the study we're going through with the men right now. I'm trying to teach them that prayer is the most important thing that you can do in the mornings. And without reproach, and it will be given to him, but he must ask in faith without any doubting. God, I know what you say. I, I, I've read my Bible. I, I know what the Bible says. But, and, and God, I'm asking this, but, but I just don't think you're going to answer me. Is that faith? Or, God, I, I trust you and I believe in you and, and, and all this stuff, but I just don't see how this is going to work out. Am I hitting home? Do we pray with doubt in our minds? Do we pray that God, you know, I don't think you're listening to me, God. Well, he ain't listening to you if you think that on the front end. Without doubting. For the one who doubts is like the surf of the sea, driven and tossed by the wind. If you doubt what you're doing, if you doubt the life that you're living, if you doubt salvation, you're on a roller coaster ride. Over and over and over. And that's, that's tossed by the sea. I identify with roller coasters because I like roller coasters. But, hey, we were tossed by the sea a couple of weeks ago, weren't we? Tossed by the sea. You, it's, it's, sometimes it becomes uncontrollable. But when we turn to Jesus, that tossed becomes holding on to For the man ought not to expect that he will receive anything from the Lord with a double-minded, being a double-minded man, unstable in all ways. Double-minded. God or the devil? You're either serving God or you're serving the devil. In business, I used to tell people, you're either moving forward or you're going backwards. There's no standing still in God's work or in business.
But yet we have a lot of people that just want to ride the waves, enjoy life, and not worry about anything else. Lack wisdom. The absolute words of God. I'll never leave you or forsake you. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. My God shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory. And there's many, many, many more. Those are absolute truths. But you have to walk with God to receive them. To be blessed by them. Ask of God, believer's prayer life. What's your prayer life like? Most Christians pray when something goes wrong. I have a family member that his daughter was born and wasn't expected to come out of the hospital. Premature several weeks, but, but stayed in the hospital for close to a month, I guess. All these promises were made. All these promises were made. But guess what? None of them have been kept. God gave him his child. They've lived a abundant life according to man's standards. But there's a lack of faith, not only there, but in the whole generational thing. Third generation now. Think about it. Most Christians pray when something goes wrong. God's plan is for trials to draw us closer to Him. Greater dependence. Not orchestrated by God, but allowed by God. God never causes evil in your life. He allows it. Consider my servant Job. God, the only reason he serves you is because you're blessing him. God allowed Satan to tempt him. God didn't send the temptation. Think about that. God doesn't send it. God's wisdom is available to all that ask. It's generously, abundantly given. And I wrote here in Matthew 7, 7. Ask, and it'll be given. Seek, and you'll find Knock, and the door will be open to you. Think about that. All you do is ask. But you've got to live that life. Without reproach, that means no blame or rebuke. Giving Him, and I love this, it's a guarantee. When you live for Christ, you become a Christian, and you give Him your life, Guaranteed. No one can pluck you out of my hands. You're sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. That's what the Bible says. You're not going to lose just because you messed up. But the problem is, is we have many, 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 many people that have a form of godliness but deny the power thereof. The Bible says, from such, turn away. Ask in faith, faith of a mustard seed. If you have faith the size of a mustard seed, and if I got my science right, a mustard seed is the very smallest seed known to man. Am I pretty much right on that? thought I was. If you have the faith of a size of a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move from here and there, and it will move. Nothing is impossible with God. I believe that. I believe it's literal. 
But I also believe that those mountains in life are the ones that we put there. And we need to pray that God will move those mountains out of our life. That God will change our heart, change our attitude. And we pray and He'll remove them. But sometimes... Help you through, but it, but he'll remove the problem. He'll remove the problem. He might not change everything, but it says he'll move it. I believe he'll move the problem. I believe he'll take the problem away. Sometimes there's another problem that happens. Okay. Sometimes it's a lot of heartache that happens. I used to get mad at my dad because he would always tell people, a new Christian, that if you use your child as an excuse, God could take your child away from you. Okay? That's, that's a true statement, but you don't say it to a new Christian. Okay? But God will answer your prayers when you pray trusting and believing with all your heart. Uh, without doubting, double-minded, not just mental, but also oral. We can say that we believe Him, but do we really, in our actions, in our word, in our conduct, do we really believe God? And it says surfs and winds. I, I said, you know, the sailboat, the, the other things that, that, that struggles that happen in our life. And I put, we are God's prized possession. God's creation. He wants us to live a happy, joyous life. But yet, we're the ones that get in the way. We're the ones that mess up. We're the ones that choose to follow Satan. Not, not on purpose. It's a progressive thing. You slip, and you slip, and you slip, and before you know it, you're out there. Now, I'm not preaching to y'all. I'm preaching to me, too. Because I've been there. I slipped, and I slipped, and I slipped. And I got so far away from God that one Sunday morning, sitting in First Baptist Church Cookville, offering the, the Lord's Supper was being passed and I cried and didn't take it. Why? Because I wasn't living the life that God... I was at church. I was at church every Sunday morning. I was at church every Wednesday night. But I was playing the game. I didn't take the Lord... And, and then, my wife and my kids and all the people around me. What's wrong? What's wrong? What's wrong? I couldn't even talk about it. We slip. And it starts slow. And before you know it, it takes over our life. If you don't believe, don't expect double-minded living two lives God and the world unstable man's division with himself you divide yourself from God you remove yourself from God I'm going to do one more Christ and humanity humility but the brother of humble circumstances is to glory in his high position. And the rich man is the glory in his humiliation. Because like flowering grass, he will pass away. For the sun rises with the scorching wind and the winters, the grass and its flowers fall, flower falls off. And the beauty of its appearance is destroyed. So too, the rich man in the midst of its pursuits will fade away. 
Now, that's not condemning the rich man. That's not condemning the poor man. It's saying what you put first in your life. If you put God first in your life and God blesses you and you become rich, a millionaire, a billionaire, as long as you continue to use what God gives you for others, God will continue to bless you. But if you can become rich and, and you hoard it and you hang it up and you just keep trying to save more and save more. The richest man in the world said, how much is enough? He said, one more dollar. One more dollar. How much is enough? Enough to meet the needs of others. That's what God's called us to do. And I know people that have nothing, the widow's might, that meet the needs of others. I know people that are rich that meet the needs of others. But that's who we're supposed to be. As Christians, we are supposed to constantly, constantly, constantly meet the needs of others. Our trials make us equal. A rich man and a poor man, our trials make us equal. God's not going to rain on one without raining on the other. God's not going to make one suffer more than the other. Now, they might suffer monetarily. But what are you doing? How are you living your life? The glory is a high position. Only what, what's done for Christ will last. Only what you do for Christ is going to last. Nothing else matters. If, you, if you're the richest person in the church and you hoard your money and you don't support your church, you don't support the needs of others, God's not blessing you. He's letting you be miserable in your deeds. I know people that give all they have. And God always gives them more, don't he? I'm, <coughs> I'm not going to read my last slide, but I'm going to read the verse. Matthew seven twenty one. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have I not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many wonders in your name? Then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. King James Version says iniquity. God tells us to live for Him, only Him, and not be a double-minded person.